In this video, I show you how I paint Caleb Widowgast. Hello Pittsburgh, this is Craig from Bitsbox.co.uk and this is the latest video in our Critical Role painting series. So I've been on a bit of hiatus doing these but I am back on it right now and I'm going to be painting Caleb Widowgast, who you can see right here. So yeah, as always, this is a quick tabletop um, paint scheme, just for some, most of you who, or some of you who might be new to painting miniatures, and um, this is a nice quick easy tutorial for you guys. And um, before we begin though, I just want to say a massive shout out, and a huge thank you to all of our Patreons who help support us on this channel. And if you want to know what our Patreon is all about, there is a link in the description right down below. So yeah, let's get into painting Caleb. So here we have the Caleb Widowgast miniature, and as always, I've used a light grey primer to base the miniature, but you can use any primer that you so wish. So I'm going to start by taking some Rhinox hide. This is mainly for his um, long jacket. I'll thin it down just a little bit, just to give us a smooth coverage. And if you've used a black primer, for example, then you may wish to use a couple of thin coats here to get a nice smooth finish. But over these sort of lighter grey primers or white primers, you can get away with just for one coat. So next I'm going to take some Storm Vermin Fur. Uh, this is for his, I guess it's like a long shirt or something that he's got on. And as you can see I've thinned it down and it's going on really smooth on these areas. I'm also going to paint his gloves in this colour also. And I forgot to mention that his boots are also painted with the Rhinox hide. So again just be sort of neat here, just make sure you don't get any on the jacket that you've already painted. Next is Ashen Grey, and this is going to be applied to his trousers. Once again, thin it out. Only need the one layer over this lighter colour, but if you're using a darker primer, then you may need a couple here. So next up, I'm going to paint the bandages on his arms using Old and Grey. Now, obviously, using the light grey primer already, um, his arms are pretty much the colour. Well, these bandages are pretty much the colour that we do want. I'm just sort of neatening them up with this colour. But of course if you used a different colour primer, then of course you'll just go over that with this colour. I always find Alfu and Grey is a good colour to base any areas that you want white, as it's a very very light grey and um, you can still go lighter with white highlights. So next we're going to take some Null and Oil and go over all of these areas that we've already painted. This will give us a nice shadow in all the recessed areas and really help bring out the detail. Now it'll look quite subtle on the um, Rhinox hide areas, but it still adds just a little bit to them. Um, on the grey areas you'll really notice it brings out the detail. Now I'm applying it fairly thickly but I am spreading it out just so it doesn't pull up too much in the darkest shadows. So next I'm going to take some Gorfall Brown and this is to highlight the Rhinox hide areas. Now my um, I'm also painting the belt as well. Um, my Gorefall Brown paint was a little bit dried up so I couldn't get like really that much on the brush each time so I'm just doing little small amounts and it is thinned down just a bit too much and um, you don't need to thin it down as much as I do but definitely when it comes to doing these edge highlights and certainly thin, thin your paints um, otherwise you won't you'll find them harder to control and you won't get such a smooth sort of line but just take your time with a step I'm hitting up most of like the detailed areas, just doing a sort of edge highlight on all the little bits. And I'm going to do exactly the same with Dawnstone now, um, on his long shirt. You can also use this colour to apply some highlights to his trousers also. Um, I would recommend filling it out just a little bit more when you paint the Eshen Grey areas and it will dry just a little bit darker when you do that. So gives you some nice highlights on them. But again, I'm just sort of hitting the raised areas here, making sure it's thinned out so it won't dry so drastic. So next I'm going to paint his skin, so mainly his face, neck and fingers, using Kissler Flesh, and um, if I can get it to focus. Um, again, I've thinned it out, it's very important that you do keep your paints thin on faces especially, because you don't want to lose any of that detail when you paint. So. Even on this lighter undercoat, I do a couple of thin coats. And once that's dry, you can add some Reglund Flesh Shade. And thin out just a little bit, and then 
dab it on and spread it out so it doesn't pull up too much. And this will bring out all the detail in the face. The uh, camera really doesn't want to focus on the doing the skin areas, but as you can see there, you can still see the detail being brought out in his eyes and his mouth and such. So give that plenty of time to dry and then come back in with the Kislev Flesh. And I'm going to apply this as a highlight. Again, thin it out to give yourself lots of control and check the usual areas, chin, cheeks, nose and the forehead. And then you can just also put some little highlights on his fingers. And that's pretty much it for the skin. I didn't want to go too light on his skin. But yeah, just add these little highlights. That's pretty much all you need. Um, you can go further if you really want to. So next I'm going to take some Rhinox, Rhinox Hide again. And I've thinned it right down. And I'm just doing little splodges of paint on his face. Now this is an optional step. Um, I'm not entirely happy with how it came out, if I'm honest. Um, but these are just meant to represent little spots of like dirt on his face because of course he is meant to be sort of fairly dirty usually and um, I should have thinned the paint out just a little bit more to make this a bit more subtle really but um, yeah you might not want to do that step and I wouldn't blame you too much. Next is some scrag brown so this is going to be for his hair so he kind of has like a sort of dark reddish browny sort of hair colour um, going by a lot of artwork. Again I apologise every time I'm sort of painting up this area it doesn't seem to want to focus at all. Um, as you can see, again, keep it nice and thin because we don't want to lose a lot of that detail. And then I'm just going to hit it up with some Agrax Earthshade. This will darken that down just a little bit, which is what we want, and also help bring out some of the detail. You can decide to add further highlights to this, but as I'm keeping this just for as sort of a beginner tutorial, I thought I would just leave the hair there. You may want to apply some Lemayan Medium over it, just to take away the shine, the finish. So Cantle Blue is going to be used on his scarf. Same thing applies as always, thin it out just a little bit, give yourself lots of control. And then just very carefully of course, just work around that area. And then I'm just going to come straight in with a Lotic Blue as a highlight, so I'm not doing any washes on this one. Um, sometimes I like to just start with a really dark base coat and then add some nice hot, bright highlights on top of it. And that's normally all you need. So yeah, just hitting up the raised areas there with the blue. So the messy desert is next and this is going to be used to paint Frumpkin. So I haven't forgot about Frumpkin. So just paint this all over Frumpkin to begin with, and then we can start adding some patterns for her fur afterwards. And I'm going to take Rhinox Hide once again, and again thin it out because you want some nice control there. I haven't got the best tip on my brush for this, but um, <laughs> I quickly sort that out as you can see, that's much better. And yeah, I'm just sort of dabbing, dabbing it on along sort of her spine, and then sort of drawing sort of stripes out from that central area. Um, the paint's probably just a little bit too thin or a little bit too much on my brush at this stage but I think I'll get the gist of the design. I do neaten it up because that's a poor first attempt but just take your time with this and sort of run these along her back and then just one up the middle. So yeah you might be able to do a better job than me at this but um, just keep your hand steady and just take your time with it. And I'm going to take some Iron Hands Steel now for all his buttons and buckles and whatnot. Again, just a good tip on your brush and a little bit of water to thin your paint out will make this a lot easier. And this is really um, not a great deal of these to do. I thought there would have been a little bit more, but there wasn't. So I'm going to take some Olfu and Grey now. And this is just to highlight them bandages, so they were looking a little bit dark to me, so I just wanted to add some further highlights to them. Now, of course, the null oil wash did darken them down, so I thought I might as well brighten them up by just hitting the raised areas with some thin down or foo and grey. 
Again, just take your time with a step. And just work your way around them bandages. And then once you've done that, all what's left to do is his base. So as always, um, you can base your miniature however you want, but I'm just going to use some abandoned black. And I thinned it down, and it's going to take two or three coats to get a nice solid finish. Of course, if you primed your miniature black, your base might already be black, so it won't be too bad. But here he is, um, finished miniature. So yeah, um, it's not the best miniature in the world. There's a lot of dark colours on it, so that does make bringing out some of the detail a little bit trickier. Obviously, the stripes on from can didn't turn out too bad in the end, but um, you know, I could have done a little bit better there and took my time. But um, yeah, that's. That's pretty much Caleb Widow Gast, and we're almost at the end of this series now. We've just got um, Yasha and Molly Mock left to do. Um, eventually, I may do um, Caduceus Clay, Shakasta, and any other characters as well. Um, certainly, if you want to see me do them, then certainly do let me know in the comments down below, and I will certainly get to them. So, all that's left to say is thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you all again in the next video. If you enjoyed this video then please feel free to subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. You can also click that bell icon to be notified when a new video has gone live on this channel. On the screen now are two more videos that you may wish to check out and a link to our Patreon page also. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you again soon.